Hello and welcome. Yes, we are back here again, but this time to talk about a spin-off of Doctor Who. Yes, a new spin-off which is coming in the autumn, which is class. Yes, what do we think? What are our hopes? What are our expectations? What do we want from it? What do we think of the cast? Let's find out. We'll speak first on this one. I think I'll go first on this. Um, class sounds, at first, it was a bit of a shock announcement because it was at a time when everyone thought that it was going to be something like the next companion or something to do with series 10. And it ended up being this, uh, this announcement of a spin-off called Class. And we didn't know an awful lot about it, apart from that it was in Coal Hill School, which is a major part of the Doctor Who law, because it, it was in the very first story, An Unearthly Child. Since then, we've found out various little bits, such as the main cast, which is made up of mainly unknowns, apart from Catherine Kelly, who plays the main teacher, I assume. At least the teacher that's going to be at the sort of front of the, the show. But other than that, the rest of them are unknowns. Since then, filming's already begun. Being a member of various forums, I've heard certain things like Patrick Ness, who wrote the show, has come out of various sets with things like fake blood on his shoes. So if, if that report is correct then it's would then something like Sarah Jane where it was slightly watered down I hope it is more like Torchwood because then it'll bring some excitement and some intensity to it rather than although Sarah Jane was an incredibly well done spin-off I still watch it occasionally I think Torchwood uh, doing something in a school like Torchwood um, a Torchwood type of uh, spin-off with class would be great I think in terms of the cast, we've obviously, you know, as I said, it's mainly unknowns. Apart from Catherine Kelly, who's obviously been in stuff like uh, Mr. Selfridges and uh, um, Coronation Street. Um, but then there's been reports of things like Peter Capaldi possibly appearing. And if you read the, uh, the synopses that we got on the, uh, on the report of the cast, it sounds very much like the Doctor's at the centre of the story. So I expect we'll probably be seeing Capaldi a few times in, uh, in class, which is going to make it extra good for Doctor Who fans. I know that a lot of people don't like the idea of class. I'm one of the ones that's going to give it a chance before making any sort of a decision about it. I think so far it sounds pretty good, actually. Personally, I'm a bit, you know, because I love Sarah Jane. I love Sarah Jane Adventures. I'm not keen on Torchwood. Um, but I don't know how I feel about this. When this was announced, I thought, oh, it's not what I, it's not what I expected. I didn't expect that announcement to be a spin-off because they said, here's this announcement coming tonight or whatever. And we all thought wild things, you know, but we never, I didn't hear anybody say it's going to be a spin-off. Um, but, but like I say, you know, it didn't really, it, I don't know, it, it's not the spin-off I would have wanted. I would have preferred something different, but I'm glad that we're having a spin-off, definitely. I mean, Doctor Who's not on until Christmas. So if class is the only way we can see Peter Capaldi and, and things like that, then, 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 then so be it. And uh, I think like Catherine Kelly's a really good actress. Um, obviously, I don't know the others because they're unknown. Brian, do you have anything to say? It's just like one of those things, you know, and it's a, it's going to be another Doctor Who special. Well, not special, but another, another Doctor Who spinoff. And um, who knows, like, what they'll go, what they're, what they're going to do with it, what, like, how, what, like what the series is going to be. Um, hopefully it would be good and uh, all we could do, do was just wait and um, just to just wait and see if it, just wait until it comes down and 
when it comes out, we watch it. And if it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. What was your reaction when you first heard about it, when you heard the announcement? Do you remember? What, what did you think? What was your initial thoughts? Well, my initial thoughts were, is this spinoff going to be about Clara? Because <laughs> this is, it's, I heard it was going to be on Coal Hill School, and at the time, Jenna Coleman was still a companion as Clara, so yeah. when she left, what, like when she was about going to be ready to leave, and this class thing was going to be another spin-off, I thought it was going to be, is this Clara's show? Is mm, it yeah. Clara's show and everything? Spotted. She's doing off doing a, a own show now, and uh, it's not. She's not going to be in it, so it's going to be just an ordinary, uh, another ordinary spinoff. So, who knows what to expect? If it's good, it's good. I mean, we all want it to be good. Of course, we do. You know, we all want it to be good. We all want to enjoy it. You know. Yeah, but you know how. You, you know it is sometimes you don't really you're just waiting to see brian you're just waiting to see yeah sometimes it you know it doesn't really you don't really get to expect what it means to be and uh sometimes i i so what about you jason what do you what do you think well, the first time I heard this, I was not impressed. I mean, I was, I was like, oh, great, here we go again. But um, weeks later, I started thinking about it. It's like, maybe this might be a good series. Who knows? I mean, I'll give it a chance for seeing how it is. Um, hopefully, it won't be much of a disappointment. Um, with um, If they do bring Peter Capaldi as a special guest in the series, it'd be awesome. Hopefully, maybe they might even bring Ian if they could, if they can heal us. Hey, might be a great idea. Who knows? Um, don't know what monsters they're going to have on the series. Or knowing this, probably going to be some new monsters. Hopefully, no Slytherin. I have heard that the Zygons are in the first. Uh, if the, I'm not sure what the format is, whether they're going to do it like Sarah Jane, where it's two parters, or whether it's just going to be eight individual episodes. But I have heard that uh, Zygons might have been the first one or the second episode, because they're looking for an awful lot of uh, twins of various ages to uh, either be extras in the episode or secondary cast. Oh. And usually when it's loads of twins when you're looking for that many i think it's about three sets of twins are looking for um it it's going to be zygons because that's what they do you know they uh sort of duplicate and stuff so it sounds like an awful lot like zygons unless of course it's a, a different kind of villain but i have heard things about zygons being in it so and because of the recent story uh in series nine uh the invasion and inversion one where it was on Earth and they're pretty much still there, it's uh, it's entirely logical that they'd be in the series. So, so we could see Osgood then, couldn't we? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, we could see Osgood. Yeah, that would be a nice um, character to make a cameo, you know, to appear in it. Yeah, I expect Unit as a whole actually, but I'm not sure about whether they'd get a uh, Kate in or anything, uh, or even Osgood. But I think we'll see Unit. Once or twice. Yeah. And like Jason mentioned, um, seeing Ian and that, you know, I hope we do get a classic companion. I really do. I really, that is one of my hopes that we get a classic companion in there. I really do. Well, that's another thing I've, I've heard. Uh, the, the boy, Greg Austin, uh, and the one that in the, photo that's wearing the dungarees um i've heard that they're ian and barbara's grandson and granddaughter unless of course really? that's that's someone that's just sort of hoping it's that or whether that's like official things from the set i'm not i'm not sure i hope that's the case because that would be a nice touch but um yeah i'd love that never know. 
Yeah, you know. But, but I can, do you know what? I, I can actually believe that because we tend to not get characters back, but we just get strong references. Like we got Cole Hill School, but Ian isn't back. We've had things in the past where there's been strong hints towards a character, but, but not the character itself. So maybe that's what they're doing. They, they're not obviously Barbara, the um, person who played Barbara is no longer with us you know, the person who plays Ian is. But, you know, so what they're doing instead is they're bringing the grandchildren or whatever into it. Yeah. Yeah, so to have that connection. But the enemies that I heard were back was um, uh, apparently the people um, who operate the Daleks have been told to be on standby for it. Now, that... Yeah. Well, I don't, that could be publicity, you know, or they could actually be in it. Well, and, and apparently what's going to happen? Davos being the principal? <laughs> <laughs> and actually, one thing that we've overlooked is that uh, the guy that played the trickster in Sarah Jane Adventures has been cast as a, uh, as a recurring character in the series. So the and wasn't he in Torchwood? I think he was in Torchwood as well. Oh, yeah, he was, he was yeah. in Doctor Who as well. He was in uh, Utopia as one of the uh, the future kind. Oh, was he? Yeah, so he's going to be in class as well. He's the first person to be in every uh, spin-off and Doctor Who itself. The trickster was great in Sarah Jane. I mean... Yeah, absolutely. it was... Uh, yeah, really it's, it was you know, there's a saying, isn't there? You know, you're... you're you're only as good as your villain sort of thing, aren't you? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm. You've got to have a good um, cast of good guys, but you've got to have a better villain. And Sarah Jane is a good, good guy, but the, but the trickster was just brilliant. You know, it was, it, yeah. it was just great. And that's what I hope Patrick Ness does, because Doctor Who's sort of been a bit poor in creating new great villains recently. Um, but, I agree. Mm. Yeah, it's not been great, but Patrick Ness could could do something great. There's I mean, no, I mean, Moffat has created um, Moffat and Russell T Davis have created um, nasty looking monsters, especially Moffat's made nasty looking monsters, but no really like super bad villain do you know what i mean like a sole person who's a who's like a really bad villain do you get what i mean Have yeah you ever created somebody like that the trickster is with sarah jane yeah like mm. he's really bad and you know but do you think that this new spin-off will have that sarah jane adventure feel to it no, because I think it's going to be between Sarah Jane and Torchwood. So, yes, 50-50, it's going to be in the middle, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because Sarah Jane was really young audience. Um, Torchwood that... was a lot older. And this one's going to be somewhere in the middle. Because I don't think that they'll, like, have uh, it be, like, be a bit dark like Torchwood, because Torchwood was... Dark, blood and guts. Like I said uh, five minutes ago, uh, Patrick Ness walked out of the set with uh, fake blood on his shoes. So, Don't you know it was fake? He could have just had a fight. He could have, yeah. <laughs> 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 Do you have any more to say, Jason, on this? Well, I mean, depending on how it's going to wait, I do agree it might go up to like 50 50 between sarah jane and torchwood and as for like um darkness wise who knows depends how they're going to use it for the series um i can't really say much yet i haven't did too much research but doing some theories and stuff like that it's just pretty much what to expect on the series itself who knows um connor going back to your question about how how will it be structured how would you want it to be structured how would you prefer it? The um, thing about Sarah Jane is that it was, t it was two parters. That worked. Yeah. But for something like Class, where it's just eight episodes, Sarah Jane Adventures series were much longer. Uh, it was 10, 12 episodes because it was two parters. For something like eight episodes, I'm thinking individual would be better. 
but slightly longer episodes. So like an hour long, uh, an hour and ten minutes or something. Well, uh, do we do we not know the length no. of the episode? I think it'll it'll be in between forty five to fifty five minutes. I'd say. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's slightly longer than the average Doctor episode. Uh, I, I don't think so. I think it'll be like maybe like uh, maybe like a half an hour like Sarah Jane was. Well, it depends how the format is because if they're doing two parties, then they'll do it in half an hour. Yeah. Uh, if it equals an hour, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if it's a single one, they'll do it in 50 minutes or so. Um, but I hope it's... Uh, Probably for the fact that it's eight episodes, I hope it's single ones rather than uh, two parters because I'd, I think while four stories um, would be okay, um, I'd rather see much more villains than four different villains over eight weeks. It's uh, that, That's what I like about Doctor Who. There's a new villain almost every week. Yeah. So you never really get bored. I, I agree with that. I mean, like I said, you know, you've got a... You've got, but I'd like a great overarching villain you know like uh, i wonder how the how the series is really going to play out you know over the weeks yeah Quite i think it'll be i think it'll be good they'll uh, they'll pull something out of the hat uh especially because patrick ness hasn't done doc two before it's something new already so yeah, exactly yeah he's uh it's not like getting someone like uh chris chibnall or gareth roberts or Whoever did uh, Sarah Jane and Doctor at the same time to uh, to write a spin off. Um, so it'll be a completely different perspective on the. It's going to have uh, a different feel, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to have yeah. a different style and different feel and a different. Yeah, exactly. So it'll be, uh, I think it'll be surprising what we get in a good way. Well, what if it'll be like the K9 series? <laughs> if it's like that, then uh, they'll cancel it. Uh, then... I don't think it's. I don't think it's like that. It, I, I don't think it will. Though. I I know. But what do you think about you know if, like you say, the Zygons are coming back and the Daleks and the Cybermen might be coming back, um, you know, for it. What do you think about having classic? It's not. It's good having classic um, villains. You know, seeing classic villains come into a spin-off. But you don't want too much of it because you want them to create their own world in a way, don't you? you want yeah, to... I don't want eight episodes of classic villains because that's yeah. basically Doctor Who. Um, what, what, like with Sarah Jane, you had loads of villains. Uh, the clowns, the clowns actually were really good. They stick out. Uh, the Nightmare Man, who was played by uh, Julian Bleach, which is Davros, yeah. uh, he's really good. You know. They've, all, they've got all these great uh, villains uh, from the Sarah Jane Adventures that were created completely new at the time. Uh, I think they should bring. I think they should bring back one or two classic villains from Doctor Who, but they need to focus more on creating their own world, like you said, their own villains, uh, their own settings. You know, don't really reuse stuff from Doctor Who. Much there's no there's no enjoyment in watching something that you've got to. Yeah, especially if Capaldi is there constantly. Um, I kind of hope he's not in every episode because it's Doctor Who again. Uh, then they need to it, because when you naturally when you have Capaldi in there, like when you had Tennant uh, and Smith in Sarah Jane, they always take the sort of main character role. And then suddenly, like, even the title character in Sarah Jane, Sarah Jane herself, was pushed to... To the well, side, yeah. Yeah, to second place. Uh, so if you have him as the main character in every, in every episode, then it's going to just be like watching a mini-series of Doctor Who. Um, so. I, I, I somehow don't think he will be in every episode. I think it'd be more of a case of he'll be in one episode... Um, Maybe the whole episode, or maybe just, a, you know, just a short appearance. I don't think. I mean, I it think... depends how violent it is because he never appeared in Torchwood because it was too violent. Yeah. Like Sarah Jane, because everybody can watch Sarah Jane. You know, it's for everybody. You know. I mean, yeah. I love Sarah Jane. 
I think he might appear at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the series, actually. I think that'd be good. If he pops up in, like, uh, episode one, episode, say, five or four, uh, and then episode eight, I think uh, yeah. that'd be good. If um, Sarah Jane and what you said about the monsters, they did reuse the Doctor Who monsters like the Jadoon, and they did have, um, oh, the Sultarans and that, because it, it was partly down to fans like to see them but it, it also saves money because those costumes are already there they don't have to they don't have to make a new costume do they yeah so they I use think the Slovene will... several times as well didn't they say again they use the Slovene several times as well yeah they did yeah, yeah. They they back and got quite, too, quite a few times yeah about four, yeah. four times didn't they, I think overall yeah they use them quite a lot so I think we'll see at least if the Zygons, if that Zygon thing that, that's been uh, spread around is false, I think we'll at least see one classic com- uh, companion, one classic villain at some point. Yeah, I mean, um, some of it might just be like, oh, you see them in the background, like the Cybermen are there, but they're in some sort of vault. You know, they're in a vault. You know, they're not, they're yeah. not alive. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're dead or something. You know, you, you, see a, you see a head or something like that. You know, it's like going yeah. to Van Staten's um, place in uh, Dalek. Yeah. You know, you just yeah. see classic, you know, Doctor Who villains. They might not be the, the centre of the episode, like what the episode is revolving around, but they might just be, you see them in passing sort of thing. Yeah. Well, if they, I mean, if they was going to try to bring a Cyberman, at least try to do a classic one, especially if the kid's trying to figure out how to stop the one of the Cybermen of the sky trying to um, resurrect a Cyberman or something. Might be an idea, I don't know. So would you say you're all looking forward to it? Would you say that, you know, what about you, uh, Jason? Would you, you know, how, how much are you looking forward to it out of 10? Give it a, give it a rating. How much do you, how much would you... I would, I would have to say maybe a 6 out of 10, but not too excited at the moment until I know more. What about you, Connor? How, you I'll know. say 7 out of 10, but I think uh, the more we hear about it, naturally, I think the more that the excitement will go up. Are you there, Brian? What's your excitement for out of 10? What would you give it out of 10, your excitement? What do you say level is? Uh... A seven out of ten. Oh, seven. So, I mean, for me, it's about it's about five. It's like it's not the spin-off I wanted, um, but it still could be pretty good. Like Connor said, it's, it's written by somebody else, somebody different, somebody who's not been involved with Doctor Who. So there's that there's that level of. Oh, we're actually going to see some because Russell T Davis wrote Sarah Jane. Russell T Davis wrote Torchwood. But having a spin-off now, which Somebody writing who hasn't been in the loop sort of thing. So it'd be interesting what we get. Um, will it be as good as Sarah Jane? For me, no, it won't. Because I love Sarah Jane Adventures. But I've actually me, heard that Patrick Ness isn't a Whovian. So that might be good, actually. Yeah, I think, you know, I, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. I think that can help. Because I think when you get someone that's a Whovian to write for Doctor Who, sometimes it can get a bit where it's sort of they're doing it more for fan service and uh, you know than uh, actually focusing on writing a good story uh, I think Patrick Ness not being a Whovian or at least being someone that's sort of a new fan uh, to it will um, I think it'll feel a lot different than watching normal dots here which is good but it's good that we have somebody who's going to be writing something you know even if it is a spin off that isn't a fan because, they, you know, like you said, that there's hopefully not going to be an, an over amount of fan surface, which yeah, yeah, exactly. Which Doctor Who can does suffer from time to time, you know. Yeah. And it's best. It, it's it's a clean slate, really, if you think about it, because there's no character there that's been in Doctor Who. Yes, the Doctor might be in it, but the Doctor. Like I said, probably won't be in it all the time. I highly doubt he'd be in it all the time. So all these characters are fresh. Do you know what I mean? They're a fresh bunch of characters. Yeah. 
you know, you, you knew what to expect from Sarah Jane because we all seen, you know, Elizabeth Slade in, in the series. But with this, we don't know what to expect from any of the actors. Yeah. Jason, do you have any more to add? Nope. Brian? No. Connor? Not really, no. Nah. I think that's about it. So that's it. That's what our hopes, expectations, whatever our little chat about class was. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share. I'd like to thank everybody here for joining me. I'd like to thank you for watching and we will see you next time. And as ever, keep on hooing.